today's Bible study is going to be somewhat out of the norm for me. But the Lord led me to delve a little into today's political climate. My view of politics is just that, politics, a set of activities that are associated with making decisions in groups or other forms of power relations between individuals. And in all worldly politics, there will always be power shifts from one party to another. And it will remain the same with a minority of men in power exploiting all others for their own ends. So there will always be the same greed, cruelty and lust and ambition, materialism and hypocrisy in worldly politics. This is why I am a firm believer in the separation of church and state and believe they should never cross lines or co-mingle. However, that does not mean that I believe politics are unimportant to Christians or even suggest that we should just preach the gospel and ignore racial injustice, the plight of the unborn, unfair divide between rich and poor, and all other social ills that political action can help redress. However, we as Christians should always be aware that faith in the Lord is not about politics. Our beliefs are not political. When we say Christianity is not political, that means we are to understand that Christianity is not to be some struggle of earthly religious factions seeking an upper hand of power, but that our first and foremost mandate is to be followers of the Lord our God and his rule. When asked by a powerful, influential political leader if he was king, Jesus responded, My kingdom or government is not of this world. And as Christians, we are also told our citizenship is not of this world, that we are but pilgrims, sojourners in this world. Our true citizenship, government, is in heaven. Now that is not to say we are to ignore or think of worldly politics as unimportant as I mentioned, because they are not. To the poor, the marginalized, the haves and have-nots, those discriminated against, oppressed, and all of the ills that face our societies, politics is extremely important and matters. Listen, when the Hebrews and African slaves and all other people being oppressed and enslaved throughout history, politics mattered without question. When God sent Moses to the Hebrew slaves in Egypt, Moses did not come to them to admonish them and say, be patient until the coming of the sweet by and by. Moses did not say to them, I know life but get right with the Lord. And when you die, you will get your eternal reward in heaven. No, Moses did not say that to them. Instead, Moses went to the Pharaoh, the one with political power and said, let my people go. When Harriet Tubman and other abolitionists opposed slavery in America, politics mattered. When Martin Luther King opposed Jim Crow laws, politics mattered. So to God, politics do matter. Nevertheless, as believers, our faith should never be substituted with our political views and opinions, so much so that we compromise the word of God with our worldly views of conceived power of the state in service to a supposedly Christian agenda. Faith is not about politics. No, it's about spirituality and saving souls. In today's world, the religion of Christianity has become politically motivated, with many losing discernment of the truth of God's word. Many evangelical Christians have trivialized their Christian beliefs to the point they accept blasphemy of God's word in exchange for political accommodations of their moral beliefs. In doing so, they seek religion as a replacement for true Christianity and rally to and support a cult called Trump. Listen to one of Trump's quotes. In response to Christianity Today editorial calling for his removal, Trump called the magazine a left wing rag and said, I have done more for Christianity than Jesus. I mean, the name of the magazine is Christianity Today. And who is doing more for Christians today? Not Jesus. He disappeared. Based upon Trump's assertions, I believe he may be the least Christian person in America. But because he being a wolf in sheep's clothing 
speaks to being in support of certain Christian agendas, many follow blindly without discernment. Now, if you're wondering if I'm stating my position of being a Democrat or Biden supporter, I will just tell you this. Though the election of 2020 was not only historical, but also very important as to the tone of our country, me, myself, I did not vote. The reason I did not vote is because I could not bring myself to accept the lesser of two evils. By no means am I advocating that you should not vote because it's your constitutional right and your vote matters and should be heard. But as for me, I exercised my right not to use my vote for either party. That was my vote. Let's proceed. Perhaps the most troubling thing I see in our world today is that many Christians now seem more certain of their political opinions than they are of Christ and his kingdom. Many evangelical Christians have substituted religion for fundamental zeal of their political beliefs to the ignoring of God's word. The other day I watched several YouTube videos where Christian brothers claimed that God told them, showed them, revealed to them by way of prophetic message. Even though the election was confirmed declaring Biden the next president, God would still make Trump president for another term because he's a Christian president. Now keep in mind, I'm not a supporter of either party, but what I do know is this, you can tell a tree by the fruit it bears. Matthew chapter seven, verses 15 through 17. Beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes? Are figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Jesus also tells us in Luke 6, 45, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So let's use simple deduction of reasoning and discernment when it comes to Donald Trump being a Christian president. Do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab him by the pussy. <laughs> I can do anything. When Mexico sends its people, they're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. And we're going to the Capitol, and we're going to try and give our Republicans, the weak ones, because the strong ones don't need any of our help, we're tr going to try and give them the kind of pride. So what does it mean, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks? This verse is referred to as the Sermon of the Plain, meaning obvious, apparent. Jesus tells us how we can plainly judge a person's character. We do it in much the same way we look at a tree or a plant to tell if it is a good plant or not. Jesus tells us in Luke 6 verses 43 through 44, no good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. If you want to know what kind of tree or plant you have, you have to look at its fruit. What the tree is really made of will determine what kind of fruit it produces. Jesus says the same is true about people. That people can be judged by what they say and do because these things reveal what is really inside the person. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. If you want to know what is inside a person, you simply watch their actions, listen to what comes out of their mouth on a regular basis. This is not being judgmental, this is being realistic. If a person is angry, rude, lewd, or immoral on a regular basis, you can be assured that this is what he or she is like on the inside. If a person is consistently kind, encouraging, and polite, then you can be assured that this is what he or she is like on the inside. The primary point of application in Jesus' words seem to be this. When we see evil consistently coming out of a person in word and deed, we should not deceive ourselves by saying, I think he really is a good person inside. He just has some bad habits or that's just the way he talks, but he's not really like that. 
by simple discernment of the word of God, rather than always giving people the benefit of the doubt, we would do well to recognize a fruit. We observe and respond accordingly. Being a fruit inspector does not mean we consider ourselves to be without sin or issues ourselves. It just means that we are realistic about whom to trust and whom we allow to exert influence over our lives. As Christians, we are told to be wise as a serpent and meek as a dove in using discernment. And clearly, God's word tells me. Proverbs 10, 11, The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. James chapter 3, verse 12 says, My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Nor can a fountain yield both salt water and fresh water. Now the Lord in his word outlines for us how we are to handle worldly government and leadership. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. Do you see the hypocrisy with many so-called evangelical Christians in support of Donald Trump's false claim? of a rigged election. Their view is not only cult-like-ish, but a form of sedition and rebellion as they seek to overthrow and harm elected officials for their political purpose, and they make the outlandish claim it's God's will. No, God has told us his will in his word. Think about it. Why would God need to defy his own word of man establishing a worldly government? Remember when the people of Israel wanted a king against God's wishes? and God permitted them to have a king. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 6 through 7. But when they said, give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord told him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. So I ask, why would God need to stage a coup against who the majority of people elected as president? Knowing this one thing, God never goes outside of his word. When God put people in power or authority, he proclaimed it beforehand and it came to pass. And those in power placed in power by God, the Bible tells us the king's heart is in the Lord's hands. Proverbs 21, 1. Those in power, God uses as he chooses. Like with the Pharaoh, God didn't look to overthrow Pharaoh or his political party to replace them with some of his own choosing, no. Pharaoh served God's means. It simply tells us in Exodus 4.21, the Lord said to Moses, when you go back to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders which I have put in your power, but I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Romans chapter 9 verse 18 says, therefore God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy on and he hardens whom he wants to harden. So who God has placed in power, he doesn't need the help of man to overthrow them or replace them. Look at the story of Nebuchadnezzar. God simply humbled Nebuchadnezzar, not mounted a coup to overthrow him. Think about it. Now one video I saw where this brother proclaimed God told him that Trump was going to win the election for a second term. It was of him apologizing for what he knows God told him didn't come to pass. However, he went on to say, even though Trump did not win the election, God still told him and showed him in a follow-up revelation that he would make Trump president. He also stated that God showed him a vision of placing a crown nonetheless on Trump's head, telling him that Trump is still going to be president for a second term. Now, that's not what's so troubling to me. What's troubling is over 400,000 so-called Christians listened and agreed with him failing to use the discernment of God's word. God tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 21 through 22, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. You may ask in your heart, how can we recognize a message that the Lord has not spoken? 
Well, God answers that and he says, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord and the message does not come to pass or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken presumptuously. Do not be afraid of him. What this brother proclaimed to be a message from the Lord also reminds me of the story of Jeremiah chapter 28 verses 12 through 16, where Hananiah gave a false prophecy to God's people in order to make them serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Verse 12, after the prophet Hananiah had spoken the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, go and tell Hananiah, this is what the Lord says. You have broken a wooden yoke, but in its place you will get a yoke of iron. This is what the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel says. I will put an iron yoke on the necks of all these nations to make them serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Babylonian, and they will serve him. And I will even give him control over the wild animals. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you Yet you have persuaded this nation to trust in lies. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I am about to remove you from the face of the earth. This very year, you are going to die because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. Yet many Christians still will follow these false prophetic messages claiming that God has spoken to them that Trump will be president for a second term. Now, how did it come to be that many Christians seem more confident and outspoken about their political ideology than the Christian gospel? Why do many Christians seem more at home in the family of their political tribe than in the family of God? Though the Bible does give many accounts of our need for political realism and asserts that the powers that be have a significant social political role, it yet simultaneously asserts that as believers in a holy, righteous God, we are called to a higher standard in politics, namely the way of Christ. The politicalization of the church of Christ into partisanships has done more to divide the church of this country than any other event throughout the history of this country, because many fail to rightly understand what Christianity is. I've been witnessing so-called Christians tear each other apart over politics, choosing partisanship over unity in Christ. Keep this in mind. In the Gospel of John, when Jesus fed the multitudes, they sought to make him king, but he slipped away to avoid their agenda. We are not called to either the right or the left of a political spectrum, but instead to become part of a people of God. This is not to say you should abandon your political views or affiliation. It is more of a commentary on who do you serve. Rather than following the world and putting our confidence in politics, let us instead put our confidence in Christ. Well, that's it, my brothers and sisters. May God bless and keep you in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. I pray that people really heard this message. Because as Christians, we are to know that our true allegiance is to Christ. And our citizenship is not here in this world, but in heaven. I hope so, too. But as the Lord told us, we are to be anxious for nothing. With all things, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make our requests known unto him. Amen. Yes, I pray that everyone will come to the true knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Fellowship in the Word. If you've been blessed by this video, please click the subscribe button and the bell to receive notification of when we upload new videos. Thank you and God bless you.